Maybe remember that. Remember the lag polynomial, the representation? Okay, I, I'm not sure whether you remember this. We have this in chapter three, so I have to look it up myself, basically. I mean, how precisely, I mean, are you, you, you were looking at the, chapter four was that, I think, I don't know. So moving average process, right? So that was the first sort of moving average process. We used the, the lag polynomial here for that, okay? So, I mean, that was, um, quite obvious how we would you would um, define this, okay? But here in this case, the, I mean, if that's, that's gonna be the case, in a general case, let me just recall this so you, you understand this, okay? So if you have a first order, okay? So let's say yt is a, no, just in the just repetition, okay? So the first order moving average process here in general, okay? So you have a constant plus a noise plus b times epsilon t minus one. Okay, now here in this case, and the representation here for that is it's going to be easy. Okay, so here this is going to be V plus the lag polynomial. Okay, and um, that's going to be BL. Okay, times epsilon t, where here for this, in this case, the lag polynomial is going to be equal to the following expression. This is going to be equal to 1 plus B. Right? This is going to be equal to 1 plus b. I hope you remember this. Okay? Okay, now how does the lag polynomial here in this special case look like? Because you have b is equal to negative 1, you see? So b is equal to negative 1, so the lag polynomial will become equal to, I mean, at that point, if you put, you know, b times l, of course, and that's, that's you know, what the basically what the lag polynomial is, okay, so I forgot that, so this is the time lag here, of course, okay, so this was from chapter 4, okay, so the first time lag here, okay, that operates, okay, so here in this case, I mean, in the special case, I mean, let's have a look at that, this is going to be equal to, um, maybe I can add this here, so this is going to be equal to the lag polynomial times epsilon t, where basically the lag polynomial here in this case is going to be equal to 1 minus l. Okay, so in this special case it's going to be 1 minus l because the corresponding coefficient here is going to be equal to negative 1. Okay? Remember that? Now, we figure out from chapter 4 that the longer invariance of a moving average process is equal to sigma squared times b of 1. I'm not sure whether or not you remember this, but you can look it up. Okay, it was a little bit long time ago, but maybe you remember that. Now, what's going to be here in this case? So, sigma squared is going to be now, what, you, what you're going to get if you put 1 into that black polynomial, if you put 1 into the black polynomial, you're going to have 1 minus 1, as a result, which is going to be equal to zero, so that's going to be the problem, guys. So here in this case, the long run variance of the process is going to be zero. Okay. If you don't remember how we will calculating the long run variance of the process, then just you can you can catch it up. Okay. We were using that defining expression. So here in this case, you have that this is not integrated of order one. Okay. So you have a stationary process which is not integrated of order one, okay? So in this case, hence, okay, so E is not integrated of order one. Oh yeah, of order zero, sorry. Of order zero here, of course, right? Because for to be integrated for order zero, it has to be stationary. Okay? So the first condition is it has to be stationary. And the second is it has to have a lower invariance which is greater than zero. Now this is not the case here, okay? Because although it's stationary, right, its lower invariance is not. Okay? It's not greater than zero. It's the lower invariance is of course is equal to zero here in this case. So in this case, this, this process is called an over-differentiated process. But let me just come 
let me just uh, let me just illustrate this. Okay. Now, do you understand that? So we have in the first case we had an example for a process which was stationary with a positive long invariance. So in this case, the process is called integrated order zero, whatever might zero that mean. Okay. So we'll look at that. And here we have another example where we have a stationary process which is not integrated of order zero because it has a long run variance that is equal to zero, unfortunately. Okay, so there is no variance in the long run of the process. Okay, now I will explain this concept later on, but so I need to, to make more examples here for that. When the where does the name integrated of order one and integrated of order zero is coming from? Okay, now let me just illustrate this by using another example. So suppose that you have y is a process of integrated of order 1 without drift, okay? So if let's say y is integrated of order 1 and this means that basically yt is equal to the sum okay, to the sum of processes okay, that are of integrated, that are integrated 0 Okay, so here you have this is EG. Okay, so in there we're basically where basically the process E is integrated of order zero. Okay, so then basically what you have is that if you take the difference operator, I'm not sure whether or not to have defined this, but I'm going to define it now. So what's going to be the Okay, so we had the lag operator, remember that, but we're also going to have the difference operator. So the difference operator here of the process, I'm going to define this here right now, so then you will see what it is. So here you have yt, this is the process, minus yt minus 1. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, so that's basically also called, you know, the the difference operator, okay? So that's basically how it is, okay? So where, I mean, I, I will add this here, so where delta is a difference operator, okay, is the difference operator. We had the lag operator, now we have the difference operator, okay, given by by the following expression, so you have delta is equal to 1 minus L, okay? And L is the lag operator, remember that. So L is the lag operator, so when I'm going to define the difference operator as 1 minus the lag operator, that's going to be the first difference operator. Now, what you're going to get, okay, so basically, now let me just look at, look at this expression again. So the difference operator, so the difference here of the process, okay, as I said here before, the first one is being, you know, the sum, okay, of these E's, all right, so here you have A, J, and, you know, stopping at T, and the previous one stops at T minus 1, you see? So here minus the sum, okay, starting at j is equal to 1 and stopping at t minus 1. So in that case, the only, the only expression that remains here in the sum is going to be et. Right? You see that? So that's going to be the only expression that still is here, okay, as a difference. And what you see here is that this thing is an integrated of order 0, okay? So to summarize that, and I'm going to use this as a remark, okay, so the remark will be, so if, let's say, basically, if you have that y, okay, is integrated of order 1, okay, then this implies that its difference, okay, is going to be integrated of order zero, which is a stationary process. Y is not a stationary process, as you might say. Okay? So, 
The question is, how many times do you have to differentiate a process to get a stationary process? You understand? Okay? And the number of times that you have to differentiate a process to get a stationary process gives you, or gives you, basically the integrated order of the process, you understand? So if the process is integrated of order one, then you have to differentiate the process just once to get a stationary process, you understand? All right? If the process is integrated, and let's say, and that's how you would define an integrated process of order two, what would you say, what is, what's gonna be the integrated process of order two will be? You have to, you will have to dif differentiate the process twice to get basically an integrated process, uh, which, uh, which uh, integrated process of order zero, which is a stationary process, okay? You understand this? So I will add this, because, although I didn't define, you know, integrated process of what order two was, so let's say if Y is, in, is a process of, of, of uh, which is integrated of order two, then how many times do you have to differentiate the process to get an integrated process of order? You have to, of course, you have to differentiate it two times. Okay, so if you, if you differentiate it one time, if you differentiate it one time, then what's going to be? Yes, then it's going to be integrated of order one. And if you differentiate it two times, so I'm, I'm using this, so the, different, the, uh, the difference operator square, right? So why then, then if you differentiate it again, then you're going to get you're going to get basically a process of integrated of order zero, okay? All right? Does it make sense to you? So the order gives you basically the number of times that you have to use, that you have to differentiate the process with, okay? So if it's, or, if it's order three, then you have to differentiate the process three times to get a stationary process finally, because all of these processes will not be stationary. Okay? You understand this? Okay? Now, let's say, I mean, let's go back to the example again. Okay, so let's go back to example, what we're looking at here, guys, okay? This was, you know, the moving average process, which was, okay, now here in this case, not integrated of order, one, of order zero. Why? I mean, because, you know, the noise is stationary already. So this is stationary, and that is stationary also. Right? So the two noises are stationary. So here in this case, what you had is basically the, the, I mean, you use the difference operator, right? So for the noise, you understand. Now the noise is already stationary. Why would you basically differentiate the noise again, right? You don't need to differentiate the noise again to get another stationary process, okay? So remember, so the long run variance here of the process, right? It was equal to zero, so that's why the process was not, not integrated before the zero. And since the noise is already stationary, right, this process is over-differentiated, okay? So it's over-differentiated in terms of stationarity. So you, if you had just the noise, you would have a stationary process already, okay? You understand? So here at this process, okay, so, so I mean, let me just summarize it here. So E is not integrated of order zero, okay, so this is an over-differentiated process, right? Now let me just, okay, so over-differentiated process, okay? Because the noise, again, this one here is stationary already, 
if you di differentiate it one more time, okay, then you will have an over-differentiated process in terms of stationarity. Of course, the process will be stationary still, okay? So it will be stationary, all right? It doesn't change. So if, if it's stationary already once, then its difference is going to be stationary all the time. But the long-run variance of the process is going to be zero. So that's how you distinguish between within stationary processes if it's order integrated of order zero or not, okay? So if you, let's say, if you take the sum Okay, so you, you would, let's say you would do, you do this one, okay, so you would, you would take the sum here of these, okay, so let's say j is equal to 1 till, until t, right, so let's say you, you take, you know, these, these sums here, okay, so you would get basically, what you would get, you would have the, the differences, okay, and I'm using here, this is, a, this is equal to that, so you have the differences of the noise, okay? And if you take the sum of the differences of the noise, then basically you would basically get the noise itself, okay? And the noise is basically integrated of order zero. Why is the noise integrated of order zero? Because the noise is stationary and it has a finite and positive long-run variance. Okay? You understand this, guys? Okay? So the noise is stationary already, and this is integrated of order of order zero. Now, if you over-differentiate it, you could call this integ integrated of order negative one. You understand? Okay? Or integrated or higher, but this is not done in practice. So as soon as you you get a process which is stationary, then you're done. You don't differentiate it anymore. You understand? Okay? And you can distinguish um, here within stationary process because both are stationary. I mean, look, this process is stationary, right? And of course, the noise is stationary. So both are stationary. But what's the difference between the two? The noise is of integrated of order, order zero. Okay, and this one is not. And how do you basically distinguish that? Using the long run variance. This process has a long run variance which is zero, and this one does not have a long run variance which is zero. The long run variance, okay, of the noise is gonna be equal to sigma squared, which is greater than zero. All right, you understand? So that's how you distinguish between the two, okay? So as soon as you got a stationary process, right? You don't need to differentiate it anymore, okay? And the order gives you basically, or that tells you how many times do you have to differentiate the process in such a way that you can get a stationary process, okay? And this process that you're gonna get is gonna have a positive long run variance. So as, as soon as you go further and differentiate it one more time, then the, lo then the long run variance will become zero. So then you have an over differentiated process. You understand this concept? Okay, that's very important guys. Keep in mind because that's what we're gonna look at. Okay, now let me just define the higher order, different, uh, higher order processes because that's that's going to be the basic definition so it, it, gonna, it tells you basically how many times you have to differentiate a process okay so let me just um, this um, tell it to you so this is going to be the next definition okay so basically you have that a stochastic process is said to be integrated of order d okay so I'm using d as a general case, all right? So this, this is a positive integer in most cases, or non-negative, let's say. If basically, okay, so what does it mean? It means that basically if you take, okay, the difference operator to the power of d, okay? So I'm using that color so you see it better here for the emphasis, okay? which is, of course, equal to 1 minus the lag operator to the power of d, so that's how you would calculate it, okay? So that's going to be 
equal, okay, if, let's say, this process is integrated of order zero. So if this process is integrated of order zero, then this process, the original one from which you would, you would obtain that, is going to be integrated of order d. That's the definition, okay? So if you have to differentiate the process d times, okay, to get a stationary process for the first time, for the first time, because if the order is positive, then the process is not stationary. So if you have to differentiate it, the process d times to get a stationary process for the first time, then it's going to be called integrated of order d. That's it. Okay? That's it. Okay? Does it make sense? And if you over differentiate it, then the long run, then the process will be still be stationary, but the long run variance is going to be equal to zero after a certain point. Okay? So then that's not what you would, you would, uh, you would get. Okay? All right? Do you understand this concept, guys? Okay, so over differentiation and stuff like these or whatever. Okay, now we're gonna discuss uh, we're gonna discuss certain property of integrated processes. So if I if I say integrated process, I mean integrated of order one or higher. Okay, but in the, I mean the most I mean the, the most interesting case is gonna be integrated of order one, of course, because that's where basically the boundary is. So if you differentiate it one more time, then you're going to get a stationary process. Okay? So let's just consider integrated, integrated processes, or meaning that if I say integrated process, I usually mean integrated of order one in most cases. Okay? Well, let's, let, let's consider, okay, so some basic properties. Now, the same properties as has with the random walk, because let's, let's see... For instance, let's look at the random walk. Okay, so what was the random walk? Okay, what is the random walk? Basically, you what random walk is, and then suppose, and then you have the starting value plus um, plus the sum of the noises, right? Remember this? Okay. So what's going to be the random walk? Okay. Now suppose that basically, suppose that um, the starting value is equal to zero almost surely without loss of generality of course okay if that's not the case it's not no not a problem okay now what you're going to have here of course the random ver the random walk is not stationary okay but if you differentiate the process okay so yt if you differentiate the process then you're going to get the noise, as is in the same example. And the noise is, of course, integrated of order zero. So, hence, basically, the random walk, okay, is integrated of order one. Got this? Okay? Right? So, the same properties will hold, basically. And that's not just for the random walk, but also for other integrated processes as well okay so basically I mean the, the properties will be similar the empirical variance will converge to infinity almost surely and the autocorrelations the empirical autocorrelations will converge in probability to one okay this is what you know these are the properties that we also talked about here when we're looking at just a random walk I didn't tell you that the random walk was a was an integrated process but now you know Okay, so basically, and the properties, what is interesting here is that the properties that the random walk has, namely that the variance, the empirical variance will converge to infinity, and that the, the autocorrelation will converge to one, is going to be also true here for the general case, which is a more, of course, a more general concept of integrated processes. I'm not saying that, that uh, all integrated processes are, are random, walk, uh, random walks, but this is what you would, I mean, two things are becoming, I think, more uh, synonymous in, in practice, okay? But here in terms of the properties, it's, it's going to be the same, okay? So let's say, okay, and I will summarize these by means of the following lemma. So here in this case, if let's say Y is a process of integrated of order one, then you would have 
basically that the empirical variance will converge to infinity and that the autocorrelation will converge to one. Okay, so that's, I mean, this is a problem. Okay, so we need to, of course, we need to identify these processes immediately because, okay, the, the asymptotics that we were talking about only apply if the process is stationary in the previous chapters. Remember the asymptotics, where, you know, looking at hypo hypothesis testing and, and the significance of the model and stuff like that. Okay, so these things only apply if the, if the processes are stationary. So as soon as the processes are not stationary, okay, we have a problem, basically. Okay, so first problem is that this converges to infinity almost surely. And the second one is that the autocorrelation, okay, so the empirical autocorrelations, uh, sorry, the empirical autocorrelations, I use a different notation here for those, will converge in probability to one, okay, as of course, as t approaches infinity, okay. And these were the properties that the random walk had. So basically, the random walk, okay, so the, uh, this is, okay, the expression random walk and integrated of order one. These two, these two concepts ha have become similar, okay, in practice, but of course they're not. All right? So that's, that's going to be a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, problems that we must deal with okay now okay other properties include the following so I mean if the autocorrelations converge to one then the test statistics will converge to infinity okay so you will reject an odd hypothesis that the coefficient is equal to zero almost surely in all cases in all cases okay all right so the test statistics okay so I will add certain properties here uh, uh, as well, okay. So and this is this is the next lemma, okay. So I call these you know fake regressions regarding this, okay. So I mean the, the general the general case is, is I mean in in, in most common is is called spurious regression, okay. So this is spurious. In German, you say. Shine regression. Okay, I will add this expression here. Maybe you 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 want to be familiar with that too. Okay, Shine regression. A spurious regression. So let's say, I mean, the thing is this. Okay, so suppose, and this is this goes even further. So suppose they have two processes. Okay, so you have two processes, and then you perform. Okay, so what, and they are both integrated of order one or even higher, but let me just focus on these, you know, the property that they are integrated of order one because that's enough. And suppose that you, you perform a regression, okay, and you do, you do the following regression, okay. Suppose that x is the explanatory variable and y is going to be the, the dependent variable, okay. And suppose that you do the following regression. So here you have yt, and uh, I'm calling the coefficients alpha and beta. Okay, so these are the regression coefficients. And here you have xt, and uh, plus plus a noise. Okay, so I call this ut, which is not a noise, but I mean you think that it's going to be the noise. Okay, I will demonstrate this. For you after Christmas when we when we have a break, okay. So how this this is gonna work and why this is a problem, or you could try it out so you can maybe simulate two processes that are completely independent from each other, okay, and assume that or assume that uh, they are independent, okay. That x and y are independent, okay. That there is absolutely no regression, but the, you perform the regression, okay? So you perform the regressions, meaning that they are, they are 
I mean, I'm not saying that this is the relation between the two, okay? So please do not confuse this. Suppose that they're independent, but you regress the two on each other, okay? So that's what, I'm, what I would do. And so this is the, the aggression that is performed, okay? So aggression is performed, okay? Although, basically, the processes are totally independent from each other, absolutely, and nothing to do with each other, none, the nada, zero, okay? All right? So, what happens is this, and that's, that's going to be the problem. So the first thing that happens, okay, is that, okay, so, and that's going to be, I mean, this is what you would have, so the absolute value here of the test statistics of the test statistic of the parameter B, you know, the test statistic, you know, regular T test, right? So the absolute value of the test statistic will converge in probability to infinity almost surely, okay? So that's going to be the big problem because this means that although the processes are completely independent from each other, you're going to, you're going to reject the null hypothesis that, you know, the coefficient is zero with probability one, okay? So i.e., so this means that the null hypothesis that the coefficient beta is zero is rejected with probability one. And that cannot be because the processes are independent, guys, you understand this, okay? So this thing is gonna be rejected with probability one. Okay, this is what it means as a consequence. You can try it out. If you don't believe this, you can try it out. Simulate just two random walks. They have nothing to do with each other. It's relatively easy to simulate random walk because you have, all you have to do is just you have to sum up you know, some noises and then you're gonna get a random walk as a process. And you do a regression of one to the other. Okay, so you perform a linear regression of the two. And I guarantee you, I mean, with probability one, okay, so almost surely, you're going to reject the null hypothesis that the coefficient of the test statistic, I mean, that the, that the, that the, basically, that the coefficient is going to be equal to zero. Because the test statistic is going to be so large that you won't be even believe, you know, what's going on. So, I, I, I have to warn you guys, if you do regressions, okay, I will finish here so it will continue tomorrow. If you do regressions, okay, on integrated processes, you're going to have, of course, a coefficient of determination, which is going to be also converging to one as, as well. Okay, so the coefficient of determination, okay, will converge to one as well, okay, almost surely, of course, all right? So you have to be careful, okay, because you will think that, okay, I can explain, you know, the one variable by the other. And you don't believe it because the one, okay, so the one, let's say the one random walk looks like this, okay, and the other one looks like this, okay, and they have nothing to do with each other, okay. And of course, this cannot be, so the coefficient of, of um, of determination will converge to one as well, okay? But this is just an important information, okay? I will finish this statement here next time so you, will, you have to understand the problem. So you have to make, I mean, the lesson to learn here is that you have to make sure that if you perform a regression on these processes, then you have to make sure that the, the processes are not integrated of order one. So they must be stationary because otherwise, if you do this, then you screw it up. So don't, sh I mean, there are people like, okay, I have like, you know, a test statistic which is so big and highly significant and this and that, but they don't realize that there is a possibility that the process is not stationary, okay? So just be careful, guys. Don't do it, okay? So as soon as you detect something like this, don't show it off, okay? So I like, you know, a coefficient termination of, 0.999 or something like that and people like very proud and say oh well, there is a relation between the two and this is almost perfect and this and that no screw that okay don't do that okay so don't show off with that because as soon as i pass for stationarity 
then you're going to find that this is going to be the problem. This is what we do next time. Okay? All right? So we'll talk about this tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. I